Hi, and welcome to Professional Networkers Group, or PNG. And in this episode, I've got a very special guest, a close personal friend of mine, Mr. Robert Ricks. And for those of you in the YouTube world, you may know him as the Angry Jackalope. Uh, Rob had created quite a name for himself uh, during the internet bubble days in the Silicon Valley as a graphic artist, and he was one of the first to kind of foray into the uh, social media world. Uh, he successfully raised venture capital for himself, and he most recently became an author. So welcome to the show, Rob. Nice to have you here. Hey, Cyrus. Great to be here. So, Rob, uh, I'd like to give our audience a little bit of a perspective here. Um, you come from a fairly rough background, and could you explain to the audience uh, what it was that it took for you to pull yourself out of that environment to where you are today? Most definitely. So it started off with my father giving me a small loan of just a million dollars. And it was rough. It was very difficult. No, all kidding aside. So I grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area. My parents um, were struggling students going to City College San Francisco. We were living in the projects of Petro Hill. Uh, and I like to joke like I, you know, like the jerk, you know, I was a poor little black boy raised in the hood. Uh, but the funny thing was, uh, I really was that jerk kid living in the hood, uh, which was predominantly black. And we had uh, a lot of really interesting um, things that I could go into, but I'd, I'd rather not. Uh, my parents did the absolute best they could. Uh, they got their degrees in nursing. Uh, we rose quickly out of the ghetto and actually ended up in suburbia and through a lot of really outstanding lessons that I learned from them, um, we raised our situation to a uh, position that was much, much better. And so Rob, how would you relate the experience from pulling yourself out of that environment uh, to entrepreneurism today or, or what you're doing in your endeavors today. Do you see any similarities uh, with those uh, two objectives that you are, one that you've actually accomplished and one that you're working on today? So similarities, yeah, you know, it's in the rough environments where I came from, there was a lot of hunger. There was a lot of drive and ambition, uh, people trying to better themselves, sometimes in not so legal ways. But the one commonality, the one thread that was always there was a hunger, a desire. And that, that piece right there, I think, is directly relatable to being an entrepreneur. And unfortunately, I think, uh, with the way things are now, there's not enough hunger. I wish some people could have gone through similar situations I did so that they could kind of look back to it and, and rekindle that fire and that hunger and that desire. Um, when you're hungry and you're fighting for everything, um, that gives you a very strong point of view to succeed. And if you always look at that and you keep pushing from that, that gives you a platform to kind of launch into trying to be an entrepreneur. So what's next for Robert Ricks? And how has being part of PNG helped propel you forward for the goals and objectives that you've set for yourself today? What's next is world domination, baby. My goal is nothing short than just changing everything. And PNG has just been awesome. Uh, from the point of view of fueling that desire and helping create an atmosphere where I can look at that and say, yeah, I can do that. I, ca I can conquer the world. Um, PNG is, is instrumental in that I can lean on other people such as yourself and some of the other team members and really bounce some of the ideas off and find a way to realize some of these dreams and goals that, it, that I'm, I'm striving for. And so Rob, you know, you and I have had uh, many conversations, past conversations uh, back and forth. Um, one of the things that you've often told me is you've gone through uh, a paradigm shift of sorts, uh, both in terms of your perspective on uh, certain things and also spiritually. 
Could you speak a little bit more in detail about uh, what those aspects have been for you over the last few years? Yeah, most definitely. I can. Uh, one, one of the things that I think was really paramount in the transformation that I've gone through is my faith and my spirituality. Uh, it's not to say that I was this heathen before that didn't believe in God, uh, but more it was the relationship with my morality and kind of walking a more righteous path. Uh, and I'm happy to say you were instrumental in some of that guidance, so thank you very much. Um, the paradigm shifts that were really important for me were just the perception of what I thought was success, what I thought was the American dream. You know, I thought I was ahead of the game by having a consulting company where I would get clients and I would do design work and I was working my own hours and I thought that was outstanding. But even in the projects that I was undertaking, I wasn't realizing a certain level of success that I thought I would. And then as we started this journey through P&G, things started to become more in focus. I started to realize some of the errors and the things that I was doing, some of the mindset, some of the, the ideology that I had was incorrect, was wrong. So one of the first things that I came in contact with when we were doing uh, P&G, as we're still doing it, is the library, the, the content that I was being exposed to. Under normal circumstances, I probably would have never stumbled on some of these books. The books that I was exposed to that really just blew my mind uh, right off the top of my head was Robert Kiyosaki's Cash Flow Quadrant. And I think that is just a cornerstone. I think that book is just instrumental in anybody that wants to be an entrepreneur because you start to realize really quickly there's two sides of the equation. Either you're a jobber or you're on the path to being an entrepreneur. Um, if you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. Anybody who's watching this right now. Uh, that was the book that started the whole paradigm shift for me. So with the spirituality, it gave me a moral fiber or infrastructure foundational piece. And then from an uh, intellectual knowledge base, the books that I was exposed to that the group uh, fostered and said, read these books, uh, led me into that next phase where I'm still going right now. And that was the huge paradigm shift for me. That's great, Rob. And given... Uh all of your background. Um, is there any advice that you would give to uh, members of our audience who are seriously contemplating doing something to take control of their own future? Um, and what specifically would that advice be that you would have for them? So if I had to give two pieces of advice, the very first one would be to believe in yourself. Because if you can't believe in yourself and you, you don't believe you can do it, I don't you're, 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 you're going to have a harder time going that route. And the second thing, which I think is vitally important, is not giving up. Because the road of being an entrepreneur is difficult at best. And if you don't have faith in yourself and you give up when the times start getting hard, uh, you're not going to be able to make it. So you have to believe in yourself and not give up. Those are the two key pieces of advice that I'd give somebody. Well, Rob, thank you for uh, taking your valuable time and spending it with us to do an interview here on PNG and sharing some of your thoughts with the audience. And uh, thank you for watching this edition of PNG. And if you are on YouTube, I would highly encourage you to go check out Rob's channel at The Angry Jackalope and see some of the unique content that he has put up there. Thank you. Thanks for watching.